All right, I think it's time for Zach Wilson to quit the Jets. I think he should hand in a trade request, force his way onto another team and start that villain arc into being a starting quarterback again in the NFL and holding it over the Jets for the next 10 seasons. I think it's possible. I think it's possible. I think they quit on him. Obviously, yes, he was bad. Yes, he was very bad. I get that. Aaron Rodgers was an option and the team swooned over Aaron Rodgers and did everything they could to bring him in. And I get it. It's not often that a Hall of Fame quarterback is available and you have a great defense and you could win a Super Bowl right now. I get it. All right, but they built that offense and everything about that organization to support Aaron Rodgers. And then he goes down in the first game, four snaps in. Zach Wilson's thrown back in. That team had zero plan to play Zach Wilson this season or next season. Zero plan. So should he quit the Jets? What do you think? We're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about the offensive line. We're going to talk about Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, Nathaniel Hackett, like... <laughs> That man's holding on to a job. And uh, and then we'll talk about a couple of trade options and teams that would be interested. There are teams, like, make no mistake about it, there are teams that would be interested in Zach Wilson if he became available at the end of the year. And I think this is the year that he would become available. So if you think about this, right, Zach Wilson is in his third year of a contract as a first-round pick. So next year will be year four, and the team has an option to pick up the fifth-year option. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think that it wouldn't make any sense for them to do that because they'd have to pay him for the fifth-year option while also paying Aaron Rodgers. And if you think that this team isn't going to lean even further into the Aaron Rodgers experiment next year, you'd be sorely mistaken. And Zach Wilson's going to be one of the full guys for that like he has been all year this year, right? So next year will be year four for Zach Wilson and then he's going to hit the free agency market having not played at all behind Aaron Rodgers. And it would like he's not going to get options at that point. He needs some time to be able to prove himself in a different scheme. And again, we'll come to the Nathaniel Hackett thing, but this is the off season to request a move because then he gets one year, one more year before he hits the free agency market. And let's say he goes to a team where he can play and there are teams where he could fight for the QB one spot and play. And he proves himself in a different scheme with a more capable offensive coordinator, let's say. And then maybe he hits the free agency market and earns himself a decent deal or a three-year deal or something like that. Like, with, like this, this is a second overall pick. I don't think that scouting departments had completely whiffed. I do think the talent is there. I think he struggled while he was young and inexperienced in the NFL, made a lot of mistakes, some of the mental stuff. But I think now that he understands the mental side of the game a little better, this year he would be in a better position to succeed if the team wasn't such a nightmare. And Zach Wilson is the guy taking the fall for it. So, you know, was replaced at the start of the year, rightly so. But since he's been mistreated and used as a scapegoat for what has been a dreadful offense that was hanging on Aaron Rodgers taking it to a Super Bowl. And without Aaron Rodgers, it looks completely inept. So let's talk about the offensive line. So they've started five different tackles this season. Uh, six, if you include Elijah Vera Tucker playing on the outside. Mackay Beckton has played 11 games, done a semi-decent job, but the opposite side has been a complete train wreck. Max Mitchell has allowed five sacks. Carter Warren, who is what, like a sixth round pick? Um, horrible decisions. Just some of his... Some, there are reps where you're watching Carter Warren being like, what is that guy doing? Uh, Billy Turner was a healthy scratch last week, and they've just tried to fill that gap and not got it right. And the offensive line has been awful all year. Just truly dreadful. Like, Aaron Rodgers would have got hurt eventually. By the end of November, they'd played 13 different offensive line combinations. 13 different ones. I think that was like the fourth highest number in the league. 4.3 sacks allowed per game. And only the Giants and the Washington Commanders have allowed more. So any quarterback is going to struggle behind that line, right? We've seen Sam Howell running for his life behind the Commanders' offensive line. The Washington Commanders defensive front then got nine sacks on the New York Giants. And this is a Commanders front that has barely applied any pressure to anybody since trading Montez Sweat and Chase Young. But they nine sacks against the New York Giants, right? Tommy DeVito, like, is <laughs> you don't stand a chance behind a line like that. And the Jets belong in that category because they've not protected their quarterback properly. They haven't got the offensive line right. 
They haven't had any consistency with it. And then you expect your quarterback to be good and then bench him for Tim Boyle when he's not. Like this, the combination of the offensive line and Nathaniel Hackett is leading to a dismal season for this Jets offense, right? The Jets have scored 10 offensive touchdowns, running and passing this season, 10. And Hackett still has a job. But I think that the Jets are now being held captive because Aaron Rodgers won't play there next year unless Hackett is the offensive coordinator. And the more this goes on, the more it looks like Hackett is a yes man for Aaron Rodgers, who likes having him there because he basically runs the offense himself on the field and Nathaniel Hackett is yes sir, no sir on the sideline. That's how it feels. Whether it is actually that way, I don't know, but that is how it feels to me. So Rogers is going to be like, don't you dare, you can't fire Nathaniel Hackett. I need him here next year. So what is that, what, like, what's that going to look like? Because there's no way under any other circumstance, and this is a unique situation, right, where you've got Aaron Rodgers, he gets injured, and you're waiting for next season to try it again. So you can't change anything because you've set the whole thing up for Aaron Rodgers. So you can't, like, cut Randall Cobb. You can't get rid of Nathaniel Hackett. It's all built for Aaron Rodgers. So you have to wait. You just have to leave it as it is right now. And I think that's a horrible situation for Robert Sala to be in because he's going to have the media in his ear and the you know the franchise in his ear saying what's going on with the offense. And then he's going to have his franchise quarterback that they've traded the future for to win a Super Bowl right now being like, well, this is what I need for next season and you can't change it on two conflicting sides of the story. But we saw last year what Nathaniel Hackett looked like without Aaron Rodgers out on his own. And that Denver Broncos team was abysmal. Everything he was running there was shocking, right? The the situation where they didn't take the time out against the Seattle Seahawks set the tone and then tried the long field goal, missed it and lost. And that kind of set the tone and you've got the Peyton Manning just like doing this. Like, I think it was like 42 times or something on the the Manning cast. And, And Nathaniel Hackett looked completely out of his depth. Sean Payton had plenty to say about it. And look at the turnaround in Denver this year. They're now like, what, two games back from the Kansas City Chiefs. After a horrible start to the season, they go on a winning stretch. They've had big wins with practically the same personnel that Hackett had last year. But in New York, Nathaniel Hackett has called dreadful game after dreadful game. Inside run, inside run, run up the middle, check down, throw it to the flat. There's no creativity in that offense at all. Nobody's going to look good. Zach Wilson's not going to look good. Nobody else is going to look good. Tim Boyle looked really bad. And then he was bad and they cut him after he was bad. So they threw him in. He didn't play well and he got cut. Right? And Nathaniel Hackett's just like cutting down trees. Just like guys are getting their heads cut off. The running backs aren't succeeding. Even Brees Hall doesn't look good in this Jets offense. He's getting like 20 rushing yards a game. Like... Teams have bad offensive lines, right? The Miami Dolphins had a bad offensive line last season. And it looks a lot better this year, but it was bad last year. Mike McDaniel went in there and was like, okay, the offensive line is bad. We don't have time to work with different things. So this is what we're going to do to adjust and play around it. And they did that. Tua got the ball out fast. They had over-unders. They had opportunities to throw to Jalen Waddle over the middle. They ran play play action, bootlegs, all sorts of things to make it work. Nathaniel Hackett is like, three quarters of the way through the season now and doesn't have a solution for a bad offensive line. How? How? How is he still in a job if that's the case? You have to adjust in the NFL. It's the team. Some teams start horribly year to year. It's the teams that are bad at the beginning and look good in December that belong. And if you don't look bad in De- September and still look bad in December, then people get fired. The Carolina Panthers, right? David Tepper might be impatient, but he decided, right, well, nothing's improved from the beginning of the year, so let's fire everybody. But they can't fire him because Aaron Rodgers is in town, right? So Zach Wilson should be looking at what happened to Tim Boyle and being like, hang on, something's not right here. And I think he's, I think he will do extremely well out of the things that he's learned from Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback. He looks better. He looks more confident. He's processing things better. There is good things that Zach Wilson can take from that. But the fate that the rest of these quarterbacks are facing while trying to be forced into a Nathaniel Hackett offense or an Aaron Rodgers offense seems a little unfair to me. 
So I think we get to the end of the year and Zach Wilson should request a trade out of New York. Next year, it's going to be Aaron Rodgers' team anyway. So let them put Brett Ripien or Tim Boyle, whoever they want, as the backup quarterback to Aaron Rodgers. And Zach Wilson goes out on his own and tries to figure it out and earn himself a future contract. Because otherwise, he's going to get to the end of year four with no playing time. And the lasting memory people will have of him is playing behind this woeful offensive line with the Jets in a Nathaniel Hackett offense and not being able to prove any of his talent whatsoever. You need, like, look at what Josh Dobbs has been able to do playing in Kevin O'Connell's offense, right? He gets to throw the football, he gets to run, he gets to take off. It's exciting. And Josh Dobbs will probably get a contract next year, whether it's with the Vikings or somebody else, based on how he's been playing. Like, he's not played at an elite level, but he's been able to at least showcase the level he can play at, right? And the Vikings could be a team that are interested in Zach Wilson. Like, Zach Wilson might not directly get a QB1 role. I don't think that will be the case. But, like, Kirk Cousins is obviously coming back from the Achilles. If it's not Josh Dobbs, and it could be, but if it's not, Zach Wilson is an option. And I think Kevin O'Connell is one of the better coaches that Zach Wilson could go and play for to be able to improve and prove himself. The Raiders could be interested. I think Aiden O'Connell likely gets the start next season. They could be in the market to draft a quarterback. I don't think it's Jimmy Garoppolo's team. Like Jimmy Garoppolo went there because Josh McDaniels has to have his own guys and that's who he is. Didn't work out. Josh McDaniels gets fired. There's not really a place there now for Jimmy Garoppolo. So Jimmy G could be out. Zach Wilson could go in. He could kind of fight through camp against Aiden O'Connell, maybe win the starting job next year if they don't draft a quarterback. But the Raiders could be interested. The Atlanta Falcons, Desmond Ritter, I think we've seen enough. Like Desmond Ritter, it's not it. But again, the Falcons is a difficult one because Arthur Smith runs a run-heavy offense and it's not necessarily an offense that Desmond Ritter or Zach Wilson is able to kind of sling the football for four quarters. But the Falcons is an option. And so is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Like Baker Mayfield's there. He's probably going to be a bridge quarterback now for a rookie. I think the Bucs will be in the market with, with a top 10 pick to draft a QB. But Zach Wilson is going to be an option if he does request a trade. These are the sorts of teams that would take interest. And you never know. There are always other teams that are looking. You know, like the Bills, when Mitch Trubisky became available, like Buffalo had Josh Allen as the clear starter, but like Mitch Trubisky went there. Marcus Mariota has kind of jumped around in backup roles. And he did that in Vegas with Derek Carr and then earned himself a starting opportunity in Atlanta. And that is exactly the sort of thing that Zach Wilson needs to try. Needs to go to a roster where he can play and attack it from there. So I think I think Zach Wilson throws in the trade request at the end of the season. And I think he would be absolutely entitled to do so based on how things have gone this season. I'm not denying that he's struggled in the first couple of years. I am not denying that at all. But the way the Jets have handled that situation this year and then used him as the reason that the offense isn't working, when the run game doesn't work, the offensive line doesn't work, Garrett Wilson's about the only competent receiver that they have. And they're just hanging around, waiting for Aaron Rodgers. And in the meantime, Zach Wilson's career and stock is just on a steep decline. So to save himself, I think he moves on. I think he gets an opportunity elsewhere. And at this point, we love the villain arc from Zach Wilson, right? If he comes back firing and he gets back into a starting role and he's good and he gets the chance to kind of use that against the Jets. Like when you see a guy get beat down so much, eventually you become kind of a fan and you want to be like, let's see what the kid can do. So that's where I'm at with it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video.